Sounds True presents To Bless the Space Between Us, Session 2, with John O'Donoghue. Our third area of blessing is thresholds. Always in nature, one sees the most interesting thresholds. Within the grip of winter, for example, it's almost impossible to imagine the spring. The grey parish landscape is shorn of colour and everywhere you look only bleakness meets the eye. Everything seems severe and edged. Winter is the oldest season and it has some quality of the absolute about it. Yet in truth, beneath the surface of winter, the miracle of spring is already in preparation. The cold is relenting, seeds are waking up, and colours are beginning to imagine how they will return. Then, imperceptibly, somewhere one bud opens, and the symphony of renewal is no longer reversible. From the black heart of winter, a miraculous breathing plenitude of colour emerges. The beauty of nature is that it insists on taking its time. Everything is prepared, nothing is rushed. The rhythm of emergence is a gradual, slow beat, always inching its way forward. Change remains faithful to itself until the new unfolds with the full confidence of true arrival. Because nothing here is abrupt, the beginning of spring nearly always catches us unawares. It is there before we see it, and then we can look nowhere without seeing it. Change arrives in nature when time has ripened. There are no jagged transitions or crude discontinuities. This accounts for the sureness with which one season succeeds another. It is as though they were moving forward in a rhythm set from within a continuum. At a human level, to change is one of the great dreams of every heart, to change the limitations, the sameness, the banality or the pain. And so often we look back on our patterns of behaviour, the kind of decisions we make repeatedly, and yet which always fail to serve us well and we aim for a new and more successful path and way of living. But for humans, change seems to be terribly difficult. Often we opt to continue the old pattern rather than risking the danger of something different. We are often surprised by change too, because it seems to arrive out of nowhere, and we find ourselves crossing some new threshold that we had never anticipated. Like spring, secretly at work within the heart of winter, below the surface of our lives too, huge changes are secretly in fermentation, and we never suspect a thing. Then when the grip of some long, enduring winter mentality begins to loosen, we find ourselves vulnerable to a flourish of possibility, and suddenly we're negotiating a new threshold. And at any time you can ask yourself, you know, at which threshold am I now standing? At this time in my life, what am I leaving? Where am I about to enter? And what is preventing me from crossing my next threshold? What gift would enable me to do it? A threshold isn't simply a boundary. It is rather a frontier that divides two different territories, rhythms and atmospheres. Indeed, it's a lovely testimony to the fullness and integrity of an experience or a stage of life that it intensifies towards the end into a real frontier that cannot be crossed without the heart being passionately engaged and woken up. 
At this threshold, a great complexity of emotion comes alive. Confusion, fear, excitement, sadness and hope. And this is one of the reasons why such vital crossings were always clothed in ritual. And it's wise in your own life to be able to recognise and acknowledge the key thresholds, to take your time, to feel all the varieties of presence that accrue there, to listen inwards with complete attention until you hear the voice calling you forward, namely that the time has come to cross. To acknowledge and cross a new threshold is always a challenge. It demands courage and also a sense of trust in whatever is emerging. This can become essential when a threshold opens suddenly in front of you, one for which you had no preparation. This could be illness, suffering or loss. Because we are so engaged with the world, we usually forget how fragile life can be and how vulnerable we always are. You know, it only takes a couple of seconds for a life to change irreversibly. Suddenly you stand on completely strange ground and a new course of life has to be embraced. Especially at severe times like these, we desperately need blessing and protection. You look back at the life you have lived up to a few hours ago and it suddenly can seem so far away. Even in this moment across the world, someone's life has changed irrevocably, permanently and not necessarily for the better. And everything that was once so steady and so reliable must now find a new way of unfolding. Though we know each other's names and recognise each other's faces, we never know which destiny shapes a life. The script of individual destiny is secret. It's hidden behind and beneath the sequence of happenings that are continually unfolding for us. Each life is a mystery that is never finally available to the mind's light or questions. That we are here is a huge affirmation. Somehow life needed us and wanted us to be. And to sense and trust this primeval acceptance can open a vast spring of confidence within the heart. It can free us into a natural courage which casts out fear and opens our lives to become voyages of discovery, creativity and compassion. A threshold needn't be a threat, but rather an invitation and a promise. Whatever comes, the great sacrament of life will remain faithful to us, blessing us always with visible signs of invisible grace. We merely need to trust. One of the great thresholds is when one is born. And I always think that birth is the most primal crossing. When you come out of the invisible world and you enter the world of light and others and objects. It's amazing how we never remember and we cannot remember this primeval event. And yet its structure has shaped probably everything about us in some deep way. So this first blessing is a blessing for a birthday because on your birthday you celebrate the day that you emerged into the world. And for nearly everyone this is a very significant celebration and recalling. So this blessing is for your birthday. Blessed be the mind that dreamed the day the blueprint of your life would begin to glow on earth, illuminating all the faces and voices that would arrive to invite your soul to growth. Praised be your father and mother who loved you before you were and trusted to call you here with no idea who you would be. Blessed be those who have loved you into becoming who you were meant to be. Blessed be those who have crossed your life with dark gifts of hurt and loss. Those who have helped to school your mind in the art of disappointment. 
When desolation surrounded you, blessed be those who looked for you and found you, their kind hands urgent to open a blue window in the grey wall formed around you. Blessed be the gifts you never notice, your health, eyes to behold the world, thoughts to countenance the unknown, memory to harvest vanished days, your heart to feel the world's waves, your breath to breathe the nourishment of distance made intimate by earth. On this echoing day of your birth, may you open the gift of solitude in order to receive your soul. Enter the generosity of silence to hear your hidden heart and know the serenity of stillness to be enfolded anew by the miracle of your being. They say that human civilization began when people ceased to be nomadic and when they settled, and in settling then questions of meaning and questions of beauty could be raised, questions of belonging, questions of identity. And it's an amazing thing to settle and to be grounded, but it's also a fascinating thing to travel. I remember one time my friend Rupert Sheldrake said, that if he was asked in one sentence to suggest something practical that could make a huge difference to our world, he said if every tourist were to become a pilgrim. And I think the way you travel is what determines things. Because I think you can travel and be absent wherever you go. But I think there's a way in which you can gather yourself and then your travelling does become a pilgrimage a pilgrimage to the inner regions of your heart, even though your body is uh, journeying outside. So this is a blessing for the traveller. Every time you leave home, another road takes you into a world you were never in. New strangers on other paths await. New places that have never seen you will startle a little at your entry. Old places that know you well will pretend nothing changed since your last visit. When you travel, you find yourself alone in a different way, more attentive now to the self you bring along, your more subtle eye watching you abroad, and how what meets you touches that part of the heart that lies low at home. How you unexpectedly attune to the timbre in some voice, opening a conversation you want to take in to where your longing has pressed hard enough inward on some unsaid dark to create a crystal of insight you could not have known you needed to illuminate your way. When you travel, a new silence goes with you. And if you listen, you will hear what your heart would love to say. A journey can become a sacred thing. Make sure before you go to take the time to bless your going forth, to free your heart of ballast so that the compass of your soul might direct you towards the territories of spirit where you will discover more of your hidden life and the urgencies that deserve to claim you. May you travel in an awakened way, gathered wisely into your inner ground, that you may not waste the invitations which wait along the way to transform you. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest, returning home more enriched and free to balance the gift of days which call you. I think that one of the amazing privileges that a woman has is to become a mother. It's incredible that the body of the mother is our only way into the universe and that each of us lives the first nine months of our lives, which are the most tender months of all, when we're forming out of nothing and finding our little shape and that we live beneath the heart of the mother and that the first sounds we hear are the mother's heartbeat. 
So this is a blessing for a mother to be. Nothing could have prepared your heart to open like this. From beyond the skies and the stars, this echo arrived inside you and started to pulse with life, each beat a tiny act of growth, traversing all our ancient shapes on its way home to itself. Once it began, you were no longer your own, a new, more courageous you, offering itself in a new way to a presence you can sense but you have not seen or known. It has made you feel alone in a way you never knew before. Everyone else sees only from the outside what you feel and feed with every fibre of your being. Never have you travelled further inward where words and thoughts become half-light, unable to reach the fund of brightness strengthening inside the night of your womb. Like some primeval moon, your soul brightens the tides of essence that flow to your child. You know your life has changed forever, for in all the days and years to come, distance will never be able to cut you off from the one you now carry for nine months beneath your heart. May you be blessed with quiet confidence that destiny will guide you and mind you. May the emerging spirit of your child imbibe encouragement and joy from the continuous music of your heart, so that it can grow with ease, expectant of wonder and welcome when its form is fully filled, and it makes its journey out to see you and settle at last, relieved and glad in your arms. Also for a new father, it's a huge change of life. And though the child dwells within the mother, there is some strange way in which the mind and spirit and presence of the father is also intimately accompanying the new emergence. So this is a blessing for a new father. As the shimmer of dawn transforms the night into a blush of colour futured with delight, the eyes of your new child awaken in you a brightness that surprises your life. Since the first star of its secret becoming, the echo of your child has lived inside you, strengthening through all its night of forming into a sure pulse of fostering music. How quietly and gently that embryo echo can womb in the bone of a man and foster across the distance to the mother a shadow shelter around this fragile void. Now as you behold your infant, you know that this child has come from you and to you. You feel the full force of a father's desire to protect and shelter. Perhaps for the first time there awakens in you a sense of your own mortality. May your heart rest in the grace of the gift, and you sense how you have been called inside the dream of this new destiny. May you be gentle and loving, clear and sure. May you trust in the unseen providence that has chosen you all to be a family. And may you stand sure on your ground and know that every grace you need will unfold before you like all the mornings of your life. It's amazing how we take the world completely for granted and how we stand on ground that we seem to be so sure of, and how so often we're so caught up in our lives that they look like facts that can never be changed. And we seem to be certain of things and all the concerns that surround us. And yet some evening you can be in the middle of your life, webbed into everything that's going on, and the phone rings and you pick it up, and you get information 
that somebody close to you is about to die suddenly. Now, it only takes 10 seconds to communicate that information, but when you put the phone down, you're already standing in a different world. That's how short and brief a space it takes for everything to change. And, you know, we'd live in a world of pure contingency. From one moment to the next, absolutely anything can happen. And that's why I often think that even mountains are suspended on strings. And therefore, when illness arrives in a life, it is really a dark invitation. And this is a blessing for a friend on the arrival of illness. Now is the time of dark invitation beyond a frontier you did not expect. Abruptly, your old life seems distant. You barely noticed how each day had opened a path through fields never questioned, yet expected deep down to hold treasure. Now your time on earth becomes full of threat. Before your eyes, your future shrinks. You lived absorbed in the day-to-day, -day, so continuous with everything around you that you could forget you were separate. Now this dark companion has come between you. Distances have opened in your eyes and you feel that against your will a stranger has married your heart. Nothing before has made you feel so isolated and lost. When the reverberations of shock subside in you, may grace come to restore you to balance. May it shape a new space in your heart to embrace this illness as a teacher who has come to open your life to new worlds. May you find in yourself a courageous hospitality towards what is difficult, painful and unknown. May you learn to use this illness as a lantern to illuminate the new qualities that will emerge in you. May the fragile harvesting of this slow light help to release whatever has become false in you. May you trust this light to clear a path through all the fog of old unease and anxiety until you feel a rising within you, a tranquillity profound enough to call the storm to stillness. May you find the wisdom to listen to your illness, ask it why it came, why it chose your friendship, where it wants to take you, what it wants you to know, what quality of space it wants to create in you, what you need to learn to become more fully yourself that your presence may shine in the world. May you keep faith with your body, learning to see it as a holy sanctuary which can bring this night wound gradually towards the healing and freedom of dawn. May you be granted the courage and vision to work through passivity and self-pity, to see the beauty you can harvest from the riches of this dark invitation. May you learn to receive it graciously and promise to learn swiftly that it may leave you newborn, willing to dedicate your time to birth. One of the greatest changes that takes place in any life happens during adolescence, when the child girl becomes a woman or the boy becomes a man. And it's amazing, the body changes, the psyche changes, and you enter a different world. And this is a blessing for a girl at the threshold of womanhood. It is like awakening into a morning where everything is touched with change. Now your body has a mind of its own as it curves and fills into womanhood. The lightness of being a girl is leaving and your thoughts too are taking you to places you have never known before. Becoming a woman, you feel the moon tug at your blood and you begin to sense the mysteries of your new body. May you enter beautifully into the feminine, learning to trust the world of feeling you inherit, 
finding ease and elegance in all you are. May your respect for your beauty become visible in your dignity and how you hold yourself in the world. May the expectation in other eyes never decide how you are to be. Learn to trust the advice of your heart. May you feel life as an irresistible invitation to discover and develop your talents, each day bringing something new to birth. May you be wise in choosing love. When you trust, give all your heart and allow love to pervade you like breath. May you have friends who can see you. May your senses be windows of wonder and your mind a prism of spirit. And this is for a boy at the threshold of manhood. As you leave the blurred wood you entered while still a boy and light clarifies around your emerging manly form, may you discover gradually a natural confidence in your body. May your new strength be graceful as you learn to carry yourself with a dignity that is sure, bringing your gestures and expression into an easy harmony and rhythm. May you never feel the need to be coarse or force yourself. Rather, may you receive your manhood with grace and mindful ease. Then, at one with your own elegance, your presence will claim its radiance. May you awaken confidently to the feminine within you and learn to integrate the beauty of intuition and feeling so that your sensitivity kindles and your heart is trusted. That you may slowly grow to trust the silence of the masculine as the home of your stillness. Though it will be always difficult to find words for what you feel, may you find ease in that awkwardness until gradually from beneath the gravel of stuttered sounds the pure flow of you emerges. Be gentle with yourself. Learn to integrate the negative, harnessing its force to cross the boundaries that would confine you. Love the life of your mind, furnishing it ever with new thought so that your countenance glows with the joy of being alive. Be vigilant and true to an inner honour that will not allow anger or resentment to make you captive. Always have the courage to change, welcoming those voices that call you beyond yourself. Beyond your work and action, remain faithful to your heart, for you to deepen and grow into a man of dignity and nobility. One of the loneliest things for a parent is when their child takes the wrong direction and enters a destructive path where anything can happen. And sometimes besides the love advice and understanding of the parents, they can actually do nothing to deter their own child from a destructive path. And I always feel that it must be really lonesome for parents when their offspring does something really awful. They can't and won't withdraw their love, but when they see the damage that has been done to another and the damage to their own child, it must be very, very lonely. This is a blessing for the parents of one who has committed crime. No one else can see beauty in his darkened life now. His image has closed like a shadow. When people look at him, he has become the mirror of the damage he has done. But he is yours, and you have different eyes that hold his yesterdays in pictures no one else remembers waiting for him to be born, not knowing who he would be, the moments of his childhood, first steps, first words, smiles and cries, and all the big thresholds of his journey since. He is yours in a way no words could ever tell, and you can see through the stranger this deed has made him, 
and still find the countenance of your son. Despite all the disappointment and shame, may you find in your belonging with him a kind place where your spirit will find rest. May new words come alive between you to build small bridges of understanding. May that serenity lead you beyond guilt and blame to find the bright field of the heart where he can come to feel your love until it heals whatever darkness drove him and he can see what it is he has done and seek forgiveness and bring healing. May this dark door open a path that brightens constantly with new promise. Perhaps the most acute suffering of all for a parent is that when their child dies, in some way the order of nature is reversed. It's the child that should outlive the parent, and it's a terrible cross when destiny turns and suddenly the child that they have brought into the world is taken from them. So this is a blessing for a parent on the death of a child. No one knows the wonder your child awoke in you, your heart a perfect cradle to hold its presence. Inside and outside became one as new waves of love kept surprising your soul. Now you sit bereft inside a nightmare, your eyes numbed by the sight of a grave no parent should ever see. You will wear this absence like a secret locket, always wondering why such a new soul was taken home so soon. Let the silent tears flow, and when your eyes clear, perhaps you will glimpse how your eternal child has become the unseen angel who parents your heart and persuades the moon to send new gifts ashore. One of the difficulties for everyone is when time begins to disappear and you find yourself ageing. And in a society which prizes strength and progress and youth above everything else, the aged, the elders, are gradually being pushed to the side. And it's a huge loss because always in primal societies, the elders were the holders of wisdom and their advice and light constantly nourished and guided the community. So I think old age can be a really precious time. I love Meister Eckhart's phrase where he said, time makes us old, but eternity keeps us young. So this is a blessing for old age. May the light of your soul mind you. May all your worry and anxiousness about your age be transfigured. May you be given wisdom for the eyes of your soul to see this as a time of gracious harvesting. May you have the passion to heal what has hurt you and allow it to come closer to become one with you. May you have great dignity and a sense of how free you are. Above all, may you be given the wonderful gift of meeting the eternal light that is within you. May you be blessed and may you find a wonderful love in yourself for yourself. One of the great mysteries in life is the mystery of death. And in a certain sense, it's the perspective which shapes the whole journey. And it's amazing, you know, that in terms of the future, we never know what's going to happen. Like we, none of us knows what's going to happen this evening, for instance. And to look out into the broader future, we have no idea. And yet we can be certain of one thing, which is that death will come. When we don't know where or how, we don't know. But someday we will be called to leave the world. It's the most vulnerable thing of all, to lose the world and to lose yourself. So uh, this is a blessing for death. From the moment you were born, your death has walked beside you. 
Though it seldom shows its face, you still feel its empty touch when fear invades your life, or what you love is lost, or inner damage is incurred. Yet when destiny draws you into these spaces of poverty and your heart stays generous until some door opens into the light, you are quietly befriending your death so that you will have no need to fear when your time comes to turn and leave. That the silent presence of your death would call your life to attention, wake you up to how scarce your time is and to the urgency to become free and equal to the call of your destiny. That you would gather yourself and decide carefully how you now can live the life you would love to look back on from your deathbed. On the earth, our older brothers and sisters are the animals, and they're amazing companions to have here. They're silent and cannot tell us about what happens within them, but it's amazing how beautifully they fit the earth and fit into nature. And I think that one of the big discoveries maybe that still lies ahead for humans is a discovery of the depth and subtlety of the animal mind. And this is a blessing called to learn from animal being. Nearer to the earth's heart, deeper within its silence, animals know this world in a way we never will. We who are ever distanced and distracted by the parade of bright windows thought opens, their seamless presence is not fractured thus. Stranded between time gone and time emerging, we manage seldom to be where we are, whereas they are always looking out from the here and now. May we learn to return and rest in the beauty of animal being, Learn to lean low, leave our locked minds, and with freed senses feel the earth breathing with us. May we enter into lightness of spirit and slip frequently into the feel of the wild. Let the clear silence of our animal being cleanse our hearts of corrosive words. May we learn to walk upon the earth with all their confidence and clear-eyed stillness, so that our minds might be baptised in the name of the wind and the light and the rain. Another huge presence on earth is the presence of water, and we depend utterly on it, and the human body is to some massive percent made just out of water. And water has great affinity with the soul and the emotions and the heart. So this is a blessing in praise of water. Let us bless the grace of water, the imagination of the primeval ocean where the first forms of life stirred and emerged to dress the vacant earth with warm quilts of colour the well whose liquid root worked through the long night of clay, trusting ahead of itself openings that would yet yield to its yearning until at last it arises in the desire of light to discover the pure quiver of itself flowing crystal clear and free through delighted emptiness. The courage of a river to continue belief in the slow fall of ground, always falling farther towards the unseen ocean. The river does what words would love, keeping its appearance by insisting on disappearance, its only life surrendered to the event of pilgrimage, carrying the origin to the end, seldom pushing or straining, keeping itself to itself everywhere all along its flow, at one with its sinuous mind and not a rhythm, never awkward, it continues to swirl through all unlikeness with elegance. 
a ceaseless traverse of presence, soothing on each side the stilled fields, sounding out its journey, raising up a buried music where the silence of time becomes almost audible. Tides stirred by the eros of the moon draw from that permanent restlessness perfect waves that languidly rise and pleat in gradual forms of aquamarine to offer every last tear of delight at the altar of stillness inland. And the rain in the night, driven by the loneliness of the wind, to perforate the darkness, as though some air pocket might open to release the perfume of the lost day and salvage some memory from its forsaken turbulence and drop its weight of longing into the earth and anchor. Let us bless the humility of water, always willing to take the shape of whatever otherness holds it. The buoyancy of water stronger than the deadening downward drag of gravity. The innocence of water flowing forth without thought of what awaits it. The refreshment of water dissolving the crystals of thirst. Water, voice of grief, cry of love in the flowing tear. Water, vehicle and idiom of all the inner voyaging that keeps us alive. Blessed be water, our first mother. Our fourth area of blessing is for homecomings. There's an old shed near my house at home. And each April, after their long journey from Africa, the swallows return to the same nests in its rafters. They refurbish the nests, and soon new little swallows will hatch out there. It's fascinating that the destination of such a huge continental journey is the fragile little grass and mud homes in the roof of an abandoned shed. It suggests, I think, that one can undertake any voyage if the destination is home. Humble or grand, home is where your heart belongs. And when it is a place of shelter and love, there's no place like home. It is then one of the sweetest words in any language. It suggests a nest where intimacy and belonging foster identity and individuality. In a sense, the notion of home is a continuation of the human body that is, after all, our original and primary home on earth. It houses the mind, the heart and the spirit. To be, we need to be home. When a place to belong is assured, then the adventure of growth can take off with great promise and passion. Often driving at dusk through the countryside, one sees the lights coming on in the different houses, and one glimpses the bright interiors that house each family. The very ordinariness of these houses conceals the force and mystery of the events that unfold there. Very few other buildings house such transformation. A home, then, in this way of looking at it, is a subtle, implicit laboratory of spirit. It is here that human beings are made, here that their minds open to discover others and come to know who they might be themselves. It is astounding how the seminal happenings in one's life are mainly unconscious and implicit. Most of what happens within a home unfolds inside the ordinary narrative of the daily routine. And yet later on in life, when one looks back more closely, it's really incredible how so many of the roots of your identity, experience and presence lead back to that childhood kitchen where so much was happening unknown to itself. The origin of the word dwell is to dig deep. And born into the home, the child starts from the deepest place. In the early silence of childhood, experience becomes deeply engraved. 
Whatever experience happens here modulates and sets the rhythm of the mind and the sensitivities of the heart. If parents were aware of how much secretly depends on them, they would become paralysed with the weight of responsibility. Home is where we start from, and it inevitably also determines how we start to be who we are. The Oxford English Dictionary states that home also means a place where a thing flourishes or from which it originates. In such a subtle and unseen way, the home is the seedbed of individual presence. And I often think that the simple act of walking into someone's house can be revelatory. You've stepped from the anonymity of the streets into the sudden intimacy of a private sanctuary. There is some unwarranted way in which the home displays the presences that it holds and moulds. This visual is never available anywhere else. Outside the home, its members become different in various situations in which they find themselves. However, in the home, the family as an intricate interweave of presence throw each other into unique relief. While this is usually subtle and can be largely concealed, it can glimmer through the immediacy of meeting them all together. If one could read it, everything is on show here. This is often the startling recognition looking back years later at family photographs. There one sees oneself as a child looking out at the camera from within your cluster of siblings, most likely innocent to all the psychological and spiritual forces that were at work there. There's nothing as unneutral as a home. Even the most ordinary home is an implicit theatre to subversive inner happenings. Parents are invisible creators. Quietly, day after day, their care and kindness nourishes and fosters the unseen landscape of their children's minds. Quietly, day after day, their care and kindness nurtures and fosters the unseen landscapes of their children's minds. In the symposium, Plato said so beautifully that one of the highest human privileges is to be midwife to the birth of the soul in another. This is the precious and eternal work that parents do, and they do this unobtrusively and continuously. And next to birth, bringing a child physically into the world, this is the greatest gift that one can confer on another. It is a gift when given can never be taken away by anyone else. And there's no such thing as perfect parents. All parents make mistakes and inevitably leave lesser or greater trails of damage. Despite its huge significance for the mind and the soul, the home is also a place of poignance because eventually the duty of the parents is to raise the children in such a way that they will one day be able to leave and go and leave the nest empty behind them. There's a beautiful short story by Limo Flaherty where he's watching a bird in a nest on one of the cliffs in Arran and the bird is pushing out the young ones, forcing them out of the nest so that they learn to fly and use their wings. So home is where the heart is. It stands for the sure centre where individual life is shaped and from where it journeys forth. And it also says something really deep about a person if they can learn to be at home in themselves. Because when you're at home in yourself, then you're integrated, you have balance and poise. And in a sense, this is exactly what spirituality is. Spirituality is the art of homecoming. The most significant entry we ever make, I suppose, is our entry into the world. And if we could be conscious of it, it must be an amazing thing to suddenly draw abreast of the world and then to enter it. So this is the blessing of a child entering the world. As I enter my new family, may they be delighted at how their kindness comes into blossom. Unknown to me and them, may I be exactly the one to restore in their forlorn places new vitality and promise. 
May the hearts of others hear again the music in the lost echoes of their neglected wonder. If my destiny is sheltered, may the grace of this privilege reach and bless the other infants who are destined for torn places. If my destiny is bleak, may I find in myself a secret stillness and tranquillity beneath the turmoil. May my eyes never lose sight of why I have come here, that I never be claimed by the falsity of fear or eat the bread of bitterness. In everything I do, think, feel and say, may I allow the light of the world I am leaving to shine through and carry me home. And our home here is the earth. And I've always thought that the earth is such a gracious host. And that in a sense, while we are here, we are merely guests of the earth. And we owe the earth everything. It's the substance from which we are fashioned. It feeds us. It gives us ground to stand on. And one day it will receive us back again into itself. And I always think too that, you know, being earthen shapes, we have huge duties beyond our own individual duties. Duties to represent the silent earth that will never find human form. And in a sense, we are the custodians of huge earthen thresholds and in us the earth comes to voice. So this is a blessing in praise of earth. Let us bless the imagination of the earth that knew early the patience to harness the mind of time, waited for the seas to warm, ready to welcome the emergence of things dreaming of voyaging among the stillness of land. And how light knew to nurse the growth until the face of the earth brightens beneath a vision of colour. When the ages of ice came and sealed the earth inside an endless coma of cold, the heart of the earth held hope storing fragments of memory ready for the return of the sun. Let us thank the earth that offers ground for home and holds our feet firm to walk in space open to infinite galaxies. Let us salute the silence and certainty of mountains, their sublime stillness, their dream-filled hearts. The wonder of a garden trusting the first warmth of spring until its black infinity of cells becomes charged with dream. Then the silent, slow nurture of the seed's self coaxing it to trust the act of death. The humility of the earth that transfigures all that has fallen of outlived growth. The kindness of the earth opening to receive our worn forms into their final stillness. Let us ask forgiveness of the earth for all our sins against her, for our violence and poisonings of her beauty. Let us remember within us the ancient clay holding the memory of seasons, the passion of the wind, the fluency of water, the warmth of fire, the quiver touch of the sun and shadowed sureness of the moon. That we may awaken to live to the full the dream of the earth who chose us to emerge and incarnate its hidden night in mind, spirit and light. In terms of homecoming, we come home to the earth through the mother. This is where we live within the mother for our first nine months where we form out of nothing. And the mother's love and shelter all throughout one's life is an incredible presence. And when one's mother dies, it's a completely non-rational event that somehow strikes at the very roots of identity. It's like a huge tree has collapsed somewhere. So the mother's affection and understanding and shelter are an incredible blessing and miracle. So this is a blessing for a mother. 
Mother, your voice learning to soothe your new child was the first home sound we heard before we could see. Your young eyes gazing on us was the first mirror where we glimpsed what to be seen could mean. Mother, your nearness filled the air, an umbilical garden for all the seeds of longing that stirred in our infant hearts. You nurtured and fostered this space to root all our quietly gathering intensity that could grow nowhere else. Mother, formed from the depths beneath your heart, you know us from the inside out. No deeds or seas or others could ever erase that. At home, when the presence of the Father is kind, it creates such a beautiful atmosphere. And there's a very special and unique relationship between a father and his children. It's sometimes maybe not as explicit or as articulate or as vocal as maybe the mother's might be. But a father who is gentle and loving can create a huge sureness of ground for his children. So this is a blessing for a father and it's in memory of my own father, Paddy O'Donoghue, for a father. The longer we live, the more of your presence we find laid down, weave upon weave within our lives. The quiet constancy of your gentleness drew no attention to itself, yet filled our home with a climate of kindness where each mind felt free to seek its own direction. As the fields of distance opened inside childhood, your presence was a sheltering tree where our fledgling hearts could rest. The earth seemed to trust your hands as they tilled the soil, put in the seed, gathered together the lonely stones. Something in you loved to inquire in the neighbourhood of air searching its transparent rooms for the fallen glances of God. The warmth and wonder of your prayer opened our eyes to glimpse the subtle ones who are eternally there. Whenever, silently in off moments, the beauty of the whole thing overcame you, you would gaze quietly out upon us, the look from your eyes like a kiss alighting on skin. There are many things we could have said, but worlds never wanted to name them. And perhaps a world that is quietly sensed across the air in another's heart becomes the inner companion to one's own unknown. One of the lovely events always at home, of course, is the celebration, which is the meal. It's where the family sits together and celebrates the seen and the unseen in each other. So this is a grace before meals. As we begin this meal with grace, let us become aware of the memory carried inside the food before us. The quiver of the seed awakening in the earth, unfolding in a trust of roots and slender stems of growth on its voyage towards harvest. The kiss of rain and surge of sun, the innocence of animal soul that never spoke a word, nourished by the earth to become today our food. The work of all the strangers whose hands prepared it, the privilege of wealth and health that enables us to feast and celebrate. And this is the grace after meals. We end this meal with grace for the joy and nourishment of food, the slowed time away from the world to come into presence with each other and sense the subtle lives behind our faces the different colours of our voices, the edges of hungers we keep private, the circle of love that unites us. 
We pray the wise spirit that keeps us to change the structures that make others hunger, and that after such grace we might now go forth and impart dignity wherever we partake. One of the most fascinating relationships anywhere is the relationship between siblings, between brothers and sisters in the one family. There's an amazing bond there. There's also all the narrative of difficulty in each one profiling himself or herself against the ones that were already there and all the little battles for attention and power, the heart and the kindness and the belonging. It's a real matrix of all kinds of emotions. And even later on in life, you know, when you talk to your siblings, sometimes they hold secret clues to who you are because they know what went on. So this is a blessing for a brother or a sister. The knowing that binds us is older than the apostrophe of cell we formed from within the one womb. All that flowed into us there from the red village of ancestry sowed spores of continuity that would one day flower into flickers of resemblance. An unconscious gesture could echo an ancestor and the look of a stir recognition of belonging that is ours alone. And our difference finding its own rhythm of strangeness, leading us deeper into a self that would always know its own, regardless of difficulty and distance and through heart no other could inflict. Still somehow beside each other, though the night is dark with wind that loves to clean the bones of ruins and make further room for light. There's such a difference between night and day and the way in the night the whole world is cloaked in the soft anonymity of darkness. And then to watch the dawn breaking and the whole world assembling itself again. So this is a blessing for on waking. I give thanks for arriving safely in a new dawn, for the gift of eyes to see the world, the gift of mind to feel at home in my life, the waves of possibility breaking on the shore of dawn, the harvest of the past that awaits my hunger, and all the furtherings this new day will bring. At home among your own, there is all the familiarity of belonging and longing. And yet at a counterpoint to this stays the whole journey out from the home where you meet the stranger. And sometimes the stranger is the most interesting visitor in one's life. It's amazing the way destiny brings us strangers who sometimes can become as intimate to ourselves as we are to ourselves. So this is a blessing for unmeeting a stranger. With respect and reverence that the unknown between us might flower into discovery and lead us beyond the familiar field, blind with the weed of weariness, and old walls of habit. In every parish, there is one field which is home to all those who vanish and disappear, and that's the graveyard. And graveyards are amazing places. Always we were taught from since we were children that you always blessed yourself passing a graveyard. And one of the seminal works in Irish literature is Crane Achilla by Martin O'Kine, where he imagines the whole afterlife of people in the graveyard and how when a new one dies, all the news they bring of the world above. So this is a blessing for unpassing a graveyard. May perpetual light shine upon the faces of all who rest here. May the lives they lived unfold further in spirit. 
May all their past travail find ease in the kindness of clay. May the remembering earth mind every memory they brought. May the rains from the heavens fall gently upon them. May the wild flowers and grasses whisper their wishes into light. May we reverence the village of presence in the stillness of the silent field. It's lovely to see in a person that they can be at home in themselves. So this is a blessing to come home to yourself. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May your fears yield their deepest tranquillities. And may all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. In a sense, you know, each day that we are given is a kind of a home in the world. And it's lovely at the end of the day to look back on what the day brought ashore and to sift it and make sense of it. In traditional Christian piety, there was always at the end of the day the examination of conscience. And I have tried to write something like that and I have called it, at the end of the day, a mirror of questions. What dreams did I create last night? Where did my eyes linger today? Where was I blind? Where was I hurt without anyone noticing? What did I learn today? What did I read? What new thoughts visited me? What differences did I notice in those closest to me? Who did I neglect? Where did I neglect myself? What did I begin today that might endure? How were my conversations? What did I do today for the poor and the excluded? Did I remember the dead today? Where could I have exposed myself to the risk of something different? Where did I allow myself to receive love? With whom today did I feel most myself? What reached me today? How deep did it implant? Who saw me today? What visitations had I from the past and from the future? What did I avoid today? From the evidence, why was I given this day? 